Hey guys, Copper Dog back one more time for this, the fourth in my series of video tutorials aimed at the Yamaha FZ1 second generation. This is the 2006 through the 2010 models. In this episode, we're finally going to take a look at installing a PC3, doing the airbox modification known as the Lars Airbox Mod, and blocking the AIS. And we're going to look at how we can block that AIS two different ways, depending on how you want to go. Now, before we start, you may notice I've moved my location. I'm no longer in the garage because it's stifling hot in the summer and I just couldn't do it anymore. I just didn't want to make the video. So now we're in an air-conditioned office. This is my studio. All my video stuff's here, so hopefully I can make these a little bit faster. But for right now, let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at the PC3, the Airbox, and the AIS. What are they? How are we going to do this? And why should they all be done together? Check this out. All right. The PC3, or Power Commander, is an aftermarket electronic device that plugs into the FC1's main wiring harness and allows you to precisely control the fueling curve to best suit the modifications made to your bike. Now to make these changes, programs called MAPS are installed which change the fueling. Uh, yeah, not really like that. The best possible map you can get will only be obtained by taking your bike in its current state of mods to an authorized dyno jet tuner and let them tune your bike using a dynamometer. There simply is no substitute for an experienced tuner using the correct methods and tools to get the most out of your bike. However, having said that, you can get an untold amount of user-created maps from countless locations on the web that are very, very good, as long as you choose the correct one, which will require that you spend a little time reading up on the subject. You see, basically, there's simply no best map for every bike. It all depends on the mods of your bike. Even your location where you live can have a significant bearing on the fueling, so you really need to educate yourself on the subject. But for now, let's take a look at installing the PC3. There are just three points of installation to hook the PC3 into your bike's wiring harness. First, you have to ensure that the unit is properly grounded to the negative side of the battery. And then you have two primary connectors to the main wiring harness. DinoJet now supplies you with a separate electrical plug that allows you to disconnect the O2 sensor from the bike's ECU. All right, first up, locate the O2 sensor, as shown here. Now follow the wire leading out of this up to the connector found under the fuel tank. Now you don't have to remove the fuel tank to install the PC3, but I've done it here for filming purposes. Use a small flat bladed screwdriver to disassemble the connector. Install the supplied O2 plug into the female side of the connector. Then wrap the male side of the connector with electrical tape to keep out moisture and debris. Placing the PC3 in the approximate location helps you visualize where you need to route the wiring harness and where you will want to place the unit itself. After you get your bike dialed in, you may want to locate the PC3 in a less conspicuous place. Once you know where everything needs to be, go ahead and route the PC3's wiring harness under the seat and frame. After final installation, you can use the wire straps to hold everything in place. Remove the screw on the battery's negative terminal and install the PC3 grounding wire as shown. Now onto the main connector. It is light gray and on the left side of the bike in the same location as the O2 connector was. Lift it up on the tab slightly and pull the connectors apart. These connectors are now plugged into the ones coming from the PC3 to make the final connection. It's pretty simple stuff, just align the tabs and press together. So what is the AIS or air induction system and what does it do? Simply put, this is an emission system located on top of the cylinder heads that acts like a ductwork between the air box and top end of the cylinder heads. When you decelerate, fresh air is allowed to flow into the exhaust mixing with unburnt fuel causing it to ignite before exiting the exhaust. Typically, when this happens on a stock bike, you don't really notice any difference in the exhaust note, but if you install slip-on, you may begin to hear a popping sound when you decelerate the bike from high RPMs, which is why we block the AIS. Now, to block this system, there are a few routes you can take. The first, and probably the easiest, is to simply disconnect the hose at the airbox and block it from there. Then, there is what's called the two cent mod, because you basically just JV weld a penny inside of each of the metal bases, thus blocking the airflow from that point. Finally, there is the most definite form of blocking the AIS, which is simply to remove the entire apparatus and install an aftermarket block-off plate. 
This has the added bonus of reducing weight and clutter if you don't mind the extra effort. All right, let's get started. Now, if you need to see what steps are necessary to get to the airbox, check out my video, Modding the Flies. With the airbox cover off, remove the two stack assemblies that are on top of the throttle bodies. First the left, then the right. Take off the air hose at the rear of the airbox and the AIS hose, which is on the left side. The airbox can now be removed. For my bike, I cut a 3 quarter inch section of 5 8 inch diameter wooden dowel. And then placed it in the end of the AIS hose as shown. And to finish up, a quarter 20 by 2 inch nylon bolt and nut are used to seal off the opening in the airbox. Now to give credit where credit is due, this modification is now known as the Lars Airbox Mod. Since the first guy that did this and posted their details online was a guy named, you guessed it, Lars. So thanks to him for this one. Okay, after removing the airbox, we're going to turn it over and begin cutting. Now for this, I'm going to use a Dremel tool with a Rotozip bit to make the initial cut. It's best to keep the tool well inside of the edges while working your way around the perimeter of the flat portion just above the snorkel. Continue all the way around until you remove the piece you are trying to cut out. Now when I did the sequence on my bike, I left that lower portion at the front edge intact, but for maximum effect, you can go ahead and cut it off as well. Using the drum sander, now the rough edges can be brought closer to a good finish. Keep working the edges until you have an even cut line all the way around. Begin sanding the lines with 80 grit sandpaper to knock down the rough edges, then progress them through the 240 and 400 grit to get the surface smooth. Finally, the area can be wet sanded with 600 grit paper to get a really slick finish. With a little work, you can get the plastic surface back to looking like it did before. With the lower airbox section reinstalled, you can now take full advantage of the new aftermarket air filter. Button the bike back up, you're ready to install a map and see what you can really get out of an FZ1. Okay, possibly one of the best map assortments or map packs you can get comes from an FC-108 user called Dukin Forever. I showed you that link earlier. This guy has combined a wealth of data and maps into a single user-friendly file for download on your PC. Simply put, this is one of the best single sources for FZ-1 PC3 maps ever compiled specifically for the FZ-1. Very well organized, very complete, lots of notes and helpful documents. Go and get it and let's install a map. All right. Once the DinoJet software is installed, open the PC3 interface and connect the USB cable between the computer and the PC3. Power up the PC3 by either turning on the bike's ignition or using the supplied 9 volt power connector. From the interface, select Open Map File, navigate to the Map folder, select the subfolder, then pick a map that best matches the mods on your bike. Once the data is displayed and you're ready to send it to the PC3, simply press Send Map. Well, that's all the time we have for now. We have a lot of video coming up. I've got a lot of things to show you. Hopefully, I can have these pretty soon. Until then, thanks for watching. Thank you for the comments, and we'll see you next time. Like say.